to get a no decision last week in a game where the Padres did win. Going against Micah Owens, five homers and 12 home starts. Maybe this is the night it turns around for him. Well, never mind. Leadoff batter Brian Giles, second career leadoff Tater, 1-0 Padres. Next inning, Jeff Blum, he gets a hold of it. Two-run blast, his fourth of the season, 3-0 Padres. To the third, good night, Brosif. Giles again, 4-0 Padres. Later in the inning, Adrian Gonzalez, confidence is high. That went off Owens, who said, I wasn't as sharp as I could be. Like, yeah. Thanks, Tips. You think? Five zip Padres. Now, in the home half, they have Yusmero Petit warming up in the pin. Bob Melvin doesn't pinch hit for Owings. Why? Because the dude can flat out rake. 280 batting average in here. Doubles down the line off of Maddox. Rattles around in there. He's in with his third double of the season. But Mad Dog buckles down. It's Chris Young to ground out to second. That's out number two. Orlando Hudson does the same thing. Maddox, six and a third, two earned runs, struck out five, and hey, he beats the Diamondbacks at Chase Field. He start the week as the leader in the clubhouse as he began a big three-game series with Seattle. Roger Clemens against Ichiro, normally good. Top of the first, however, Ichiro, who entered two for 20 lifetime against Clemens, singles. Remember, the Mariners came in as uh, losers of their nine in, last nine in a row. That's not good. Ichiro, again off Clemens, a home run. He's turning this thing around, and the M's lead 2-1, to one, 200th hit for Ichiro, seventh consecutive season with 200 hits, tying him with Wade Boggs for second most all-time, trailing only Lee Willie Keeler. Ichiro hitting 350, by the way, this year. Ordonez leads the AL hitting 357. He's won two batting titles. Boggs, by the way, won five in his Hall of Fame career. Top of the fourth, again, Ichiro the other way. He was three for five. Clemens, four innings pitch, eight hits, five earned. Check out Ichiro in the rundown. Forget about it. I ain't hurting my knee. I'm out. He goes in motion. Mike Mussina comes out of the bullpen to replace Roger Clemens. First regular season appearance for Mussina. Had a big one against uh, Red Sox Nation back in the playoffs in 03. But this is the first regular season relief appearance. Three and two thirds, give up seven hits and two earned. Did get Jose Vidro there. But here, against Junieski Betancourt, gives up a long double off the wall. M's go on to win, 7-1. to one. Felix Hernandez pitched real well, seven strong, one earned run. The bullpen was good the rest of the way, and the M's win. Now Roger Clemens. Pedro Martinez making his first start since shoulder surgery, taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Met fans and Cincy showing Pete the love. Here's Willie Randolph. He had a guy like... Pedro's magnitude is tremendous, and it's got to be a lift, but the lift really comes from pitching well. Look at Pedro. He looked like he was dropping it like it's hot there before the game. Bottom first, facing Ken Griffey Jr. He flies out to center. Josh Hamilton tagging from third and just beats Carlos Beltran's throw. one nothing Reds. Next batter, Brandon Phillips. He brings in Alex Gonzalez, and it's 2 nothing Reds. So Pedro starting off shaky, but he did retire the next two batters to get out of the inning. Martinez in the second on the brink of history. Sitting on 2,999 strikeouts gets Aaron Harang. That's number 3,000. 15th pitcher in history to reach that milestone. Next inning, Mets down 2-1. to one. one on for David Wright. Opposite field Tater, two-run blast. His 26th of the season, and the Mets take a 3-2 lead. Fifth inning now. Runners at first and third, two outs. Pedro Martinez getting Adam Dunn to ground out into the shift. That was all for Pedro. 76 pitches, five innings, two runs. Mets win 10 to four. Here's Bob Holtzman with more on Pedro. Red Sox best team in baseball have many candidates for MVP. Beckett, Pavelbon, Pedroia, Okajima, even Ortiz having very good numbers. But Mike Lowell may get the vote if we had one of them dot-com votes, one of them polls. Tenth highest OPS in baseball. How about a first inning free run, Jackson? 333, 18 homers, 101 RBIs, and he's a free agent. The clear-cut AL Rookie of the Year, by the way, is Dustin Pedroia. Three for five, now hitting 327, and the Red Sox have a 7-1 lead on Toronto. Dice K. Matsuzaka. Probably the second best 
a uh, rookie pitcher to Brian Bannister of the Royals. He has a big lead, but he's going to try to give it right back. Troy Gloss, three-run homer, his 19th. Lead down to 10 to 5. Matsuzaka, five and a third, seven earned. His year right now, 4.11 this year. Matt Stairs was four for four. He's now hitting 312. And the lead is 10 to 8. Two batters later, tying run on third. Frank Thomas with Manny Del Carmen in. And Jacoby Ellsbury, the rookie. Oh, Manny would have had that. Manny would have had that standing up. What a catch by the rookie. Frank Thomas is shocked. Top of seven. Again, the Blue Jays. Tying run. There's Hideki Okajima. One of his best changeups of the year. Red Sox give up 10 and win. Last time they did that was that A Rod Veritek shoving match thing on the Bill Miller three on the first sports Twins and Indians, supernatural, not so super against the Indians this year. Johan Santana 0 and 4 against the Tribe. ERA over 4. Travis Hapner in the first. Hot shot back to the mound. That'll start that well. Jason Bartlett drops it. Everyone's safe. Look at Johan Santana. He's like, it's all right. In the third, Brian Garko, base knocked to right. Victor Martinez going to third, but Michael Kadire's throw is cut off by Bartlett. Not sure why he cut it there. Maybe could have beaten Martinez to the bag. Martinez later scored on the sack fly, so it's 3 0 Indians. CC Sabathia pitching very well. It's Michael Kadire in the fifth, Ryan Garko. That's his 15th of the year, and it's 4 0 Cleveland. Now, look at this 30th home run allowed by Santana. That leads the major. A guy of his stuff giving up that many homers. Sabathia struck out six in eight shutout innings. Ninth consecutive start with two runs allowed or fewer as the Tribe win five. Over Milwaukee in the NL Central. Dodgers in the wild card and division hunt as well. Alfonso Soriano, bottom three. Game tied at one. Runner on first. That's Carlos Zambrano, the pitcher. Luis Gonzalez hits the cutoff man. And we know Rafael Fercal has a great arm. I, I think I saw Mike Quaddy hold up a stop sign. Yeah, it clearly was, but... How could he not see it? Zambrano runs right through it. Game still tied at one. The very next inning, tie game at two. Two runners on his 30th pitch of the inning. Zambrano misses his location. Esteban Liza singles two run scores. Now 4-2 Dodgers. Top of five, Dodgers keep the momentum. Russell Martin, that's a single. Andre Ethier scores on the play. Dodgers up 6-2. Wrigley boos Carlos and he either says, I'll remember that or I agree with you or I'm not a man. Kind of like Paul Hogan. <laughs> Milwaukee chasing the Cubs. They were hosting the Astros. Bottom six, great at bat. Craig Council had against Roy Oswald. On the 10th pitch, lines a shot into the gap. Corey Hart scores. Johnny Estrada. Come on, Biggin. He lumbers around third. The speedster. Council tied a season high with three ribs. A hamstring. <laughs> ben Sheets is fired up. Brewers have a 5-3 lead. It's 7-5 Milwaukee in the eighth. Greg Aquino facing Hunter Pence. One of the few bright spots in an otherwise dismal season for the Astros. That's into the gap. Gets past Bill Hall. Ty Wigington. Pinch runner Brandon Backy score as Pence is in with the triple. Astros tie the game at seven and Ben Sheets is like, dude, you're killing me. Next batter, Chris Burke. Oh boy. It's a pass ball charged to Estrada. Pence scores. Brewers fall to Houston as their three game win streak is over. They lose 9 7. Cardinals two back, but the injuries piling up. Carnacion rolling out for the year, although Mark Mulder is supposed to start on Wednesday. That's good news. Kip Wells and the Cardinals looking for their seventh win in the last nine against the Pirates, but not a good start for Wells. That's Jose Bautista, 14th homer of the year, 1-0 Buccos. Pirates now up 3-0. Freddie Sanchez, batting champion a year ago, hitting 318 this year. He had three hits in the game. That's a double. Bautista will score. And the Pirates add to their lead. He's safe. Good slide. Top of the fifth, Xavier Nate. Oh! Ooh. Hit in the helmet. He would walk off under his own power. Oh! And did not sustain a concussion. So that's good news for Nady and good news for the Pirates. They go on to win 11 0. Ian Snell pitches seven strong. Beating the Yankees. The Angels lead the AL West with six as they play the A's, but the Angels also gunning for best overall record, slightly trailing Bossa in that department. Irvin Santana, 0 and 6, his last nine starts, but looking good here. Got help from Blue with a big strike zone, then gets Nick Swisher with a nasty breaking ball. Six and a third, no runs. Meanwhile, four nothing Angels. First and third, two outs. Garrett Anderson, Chad Gadan, 
It's by Kurt Suzuki. Then they'll put Anderson on with first base open. And then against Mysuris Turris, the ball gets by Suzuki again. Orlando Cabrera scores. Later, it's Suris. is Torres with a base hit to right. Angels lead the Mariners by six and a half. And they're game and a half back of Boston. For Barry Bonds not in the lineup Monday. That makes three days out of four he has not played. Bottom three, a rocky one for Matt Kane. Ducks on the pond for Brad Hopp. And that's a two-out base hit bingo. Plates two. Rockies take a 4-1 lead. That was all for Kane. And he didn't look, whoa, awkward. Gave up five hits, six runs in the third inning alone. Patrick Mish later in the inning, providing no relief. Troy Tulowitzki brings in Garrett Atkins, 5-1 Rockies. Chris Iannetta then followed that up with a two-run triple. Rockies scored seven times in the third, go on to win 7-4. They remain five games back in the National League West. Jeff Francis, 10-1 in his last 16 starts. Brian McCann hit two grand slams in August. It's a new month. Let's, let's start up that number again. But no, he's going to short hop the wall here to Shara and Frank Cor will score 2-1 Braves. Top of the sixth, Philly's now down 3-1. Abraham Nunez. Oh, oh. Right in the mouth. Mm. Knights of Columbus, that hurts. Later, a, oh, Blue, give me a break. That ball's outside. Well, speak, I wouldn't want to swing in. Speaking of strikeouts, Ryan Howard struck out 40 times in August. If he ends up striking out 40 times in September, he'll finish the year with 200 strikeouts. The record's 195 by Adam Dunn. Braves win. So the Rockies and Dodgers creep closer to the NL wildcard lead. First base coach George Hendrick in anger. Ooh, George Hendrick, yeah. Focus on this highlight. Here it is. Base is loaded. Here comes Carl Crawford. He's running down the first baseline. And Paul Nart, umpire, calls him out. And <laughs> look at that. Here, thank goodness he didn't have a pole vault handy. Oh, right there. Yeah. Paul Nart, uh, first base umpire. As we can see by this replay, as Joe Madden comes out, uh, he had a Madden should have given him his glasses. He had a brain Nart. I mean, because he's clearly, not only does he yeah, beat yeah. pro, but Kevin Millar is feet off the bag. That's an old Millar trick from back in his Red Sox days. Hey, D-Rays won. They won 9 of 11, and Carlos Peña hit a home run. It's 35th in the record. Let's get ahead of ourselves. First things first, Tuesday night's game of the series. Tony Clark, 3 for 7 against the Padres. Chris Young, all three are home runs. And Clark facing Young. Yeah, get out of town. That's a career-high 13th of the season. You see Josh Bard wants the ball. Inside, instead it goes outside, and certainly traveled outside the ballpark. Bottom of the third, two on for Eric Burns. Clark is lurking in the on-deck circle. And with him there, Burns drives it deep left center, out. Perhaps Young was distracted by Clark on deck. Either way, Burns hot, two overs, eight RBIs, his last four games. Doug Davis on the hill. Milton Bradley swings, bat goes flying. That's strike two. The fan has the bat. Bradley oh. wants it back. They make the trade. Nearly hits LeVon Hernandez in the head. It's only funny because it did. Bradley looking at strike three. He would argue be tossed. Diamondbacks win. Chris Young has not won since July 19th. He's always a wild card with the win. That's Brad Pitt catching the game. One half of the power couple. They call Brangelina. Roten's got in half price on Tuesday. No, it's, it's not a rat. It's a, it's a squirrel. Cute little guy. Chin Ming Wong looking for his 17th win of the season. Walked the first two men in the fifth, but gets Jose Lopez to ground into the inning ending double play. Top six, Jose Guillen grounds to second, starts the four, six, three double play. Wong had the sinker working. Home half, Horacio Ramirez finding pitching ain't easy. Wow. Alex Rodriguez, upper, upper tank. 46th home run of the season. Look at Derek Jeter's reaction right there. He's like, Dude, what the? Meantime, seventh inning, Wong induces another inning ending double play. That's three straight. Bottom of the seventh, Bobby Abreu, been in a kind of a slump of his own, but solo homer here, one of his four hits. In fact, the Yankees had 20 hits as a team, 5-1 at that point. Later, well, scary moment for the Yankees. A-Rod slides into third. Adrian Beltre lands on his ankle. X-rays were negative, but A-Rod said it's not sure if he's going to play Wednesday. Yankees go on to win 12-3. Wildcard chasing Dodgers. Steve Traxel, his latest debut for the Cubs. 
facing the Dodgers. Matt Kemp, by the way, second four-hit game of the season. He's seven for his last 12. Alfonso Soriano comes up throwing. Jason Cattle, the tag on the plate. Juan Pierre meet at home. Dodgers up 3-1. Darrell Ward into the center. It's going to get over Juan Pierre's head. That's hard to do. Aramis Ramirez coming around, showing off the wheels. And under the tag, tremendous slide scores from first couple in a run. One out, runners in the corners. Here's Jock Jones. Don't assume it, but it happens. That's a double play. 4-6-3. Dodgers go on to win. Brad Petty is 15th win of the season. Traxel does suffer the loss in his latest Cubs debut. Ned Yost and the Brewers are chasing the Cubs in the Central, hosting the Astros on Tuesday. Bottom first, two out, no score until Ryan Braun. Connects for his 27th home run of the season, and the Brewers have a 1-0 lead. Next inning, also with two outs, Gabe Gross grounded a second. Chris Burke, great effort, but he can't get the out at first. Lance Berkman goes to third. It gets away, and that allows Carlos Villanueva to score. And the Brewers have a 2-0 lead on the throwing error by Berkman. Bottom five, Brewers up 3-1. Jeff Jenkins grounded a second. Burke is there again, another Dazzling, well, he didn't get it, but it was good effort, he dove. Corey Hart scores, Brewers go up 4-1. to one. Villanueva, just his second start. One earned in six innings as Francisco Cadero gets his 40th save of the season. That's a new team record. Pirates have beaten the Cards three straight, outscoring the Redbirds 31-5. to five. Bottom of the first, no score, one on for Rick and Keel. Man apparently can't hit. Doubles to right off Matt Morris. And Keel's 20th RBI of the season in this squirrel trouble at Bush. Yadier Molina throws behind Steven Pierce at first, picks him off. What a play by Molina. Back to the squirrel games, the Cardinals bullpen trying to lure him in. The squirrel gets away. One of the smarter animals. It really looks good. Dunking the double of Matt Morris down the line. Three run score. Cards take a 5-2 lead, win 6-2, but the bottom line, what you need to know is, Cards can catch the squirrel. Get going for a career best 17th win of the season. 3-1 and one in his last five starts. Beckett, like Spencer from the Hills, bringing the cheese. Gets Matt Stairs. Next inning, same treatment for Troy Gloss. Remember, he gave up 13 hits last week to the Yankees, but he was solid on Tuesday, struck out the big hurt. Seven Ks in eight innings for Beckett. Bottom four, Roy Halladay to Coco Crisp in a one-out jam. Crisp beats the throw at first, so instead of the inning being over, a run scores, and it's one nothing Red Sox. Look at the hustle for Coco. Red Sox with a lot of speed at the bottom of the lineup with Crisp and the rookie, Jacoby Ellsbury, who goes down and gets it. Second career homer, it's a two-run blast. 3 nothing Red Sox, but the Jays come back. Matt Stairs still with a quick bat. Three-run homer, his 19th of the season, his most since 3 Jays within one at 4-3. to three. Let's bring on Jonathan Papelbon for the third straight day. First time he's done that all year. Gets Lyle Overbay looking. Sox win 5-3. Go for the sweep Wednesday. Well, the Tigers were one game off the best record in the big since six weeks ago. Since then, Detroit's 14 and 26, tied for the worst record of the AL, tied with Tuesday night's opponent, the White Sox. Jerry Bottom in a big part of the slump, but this isn't his fault here. Placido Polanco had to wait for Carlos Guillen to get to the bag. Later in the sixth, with a runner on, Jim Leland out to talk to Bottom, and he's got a 3 0 count against Alex Sintra. Then on the 3 1 pitch, yeah, hitters count, hit it out. First homer of the season for Sintra. That was all for Bondum and Zach Miner in. Gets Danny Richard the slice to left. Marcus Timms, the ball pop out of his glove. I mean, Jim Leland has been wondering, weren't we in the World Series last year? Bottom of the ninth, 3 1 Sox. Bobby Jenks allowed two men to reach for the first time since July. But then he strikes out Curtis Granderson to end it, his 37th save. So the Angels have their eyes on the American League's best record, taking on the A's. Jared Weaver giving up one earned run in his last 14 innings. First batter of the game. Well, that's not the way you want to start if you're Weaver. 20th, 23rd career leadoff homer for Shannon Stewart, and it's 1-0 A's. Moved to the third, Howie Kendrick facing Lenny DiNardo with a man off. And Howie Kendrick making a bid. Off the rocks. Number five for him, and we're tied at two. But here's the man that's just been on fire for the Angels, Garrett Anderson. 
Home run number 14 for him, his eighth in his last 14 games. Make it nine straight games with an RBI. More on that in a second. K Rod strikes out Jack, Cus Jack Custon. Boy, if we could just get him to show some emotion, that would be great. <laughs> Angels win four to three. The Indians fresh off hammering Johan Santana for the fifth time this year. So would Travis Hafner of the Tribe have a little letdown against the just recalled Kevin Slowey? I don't think so. How about Hafner, the crush job, 20th of the year? Now check this out. Watch this. A Minnesota fan grabs the baseball, right? Put the game ball in his pocket. Then, this fan's pretty smart. He's going to go to his bag. Those are not game balls. Take that and throw it back. So what he's done, he's made the home fans, everybody's happy. Hey, he's throwing back the visiting team's home run. But in reality, no, he wasn't. After his dad looking on and watching this off Joe Nathan in trying to close things out. Mr. Hafner has plenty of reason to be proud. Hafner's 21st tied at five. So much for closing things out. Joe Maurer inherits a 3-2 count. In a tie ball game, they were hoping not to use Maurer in this spot. He strikes out swing on his only pitch from Rafael Betancourt. On to the 11th, so Maurer has to stay in the game. Catch. Game still tied at five with the base loader. It's, well, who else but Hafner? Sack fly. Half the two for four, four RBIs. Indians go on to win by a score of seven to five. A look at the race for the best record in the American League. All three teams win. All right, a day after it was all about the Mets pitcher, Pedro, it was all about the Mets catcher, Paul LaDuca in Cincinnati. Willie Randolph's guys looking for their first five-game winning streak of the season. Can you believe the Mets had that a five-game winning streak all year? Paul LaDuca, big fly off Matt Belisle. Olive Perez strikes out Norris Hopper swinging, but it gets away from LaDuca. Throw to first can't be handled by Carlos Delgado. So Hopper safe. Next batter, Jeff Keplinger. Of course, give away extra outs like that. Make the pay. Keplinger doubles down the line. Hopper rounds third and slides in safely. See Ken Griffey Jr. in the on-deck circle. Heads up play by Griffey, who noticed Hopper fail to touch the plate. Four, three reds, and then it's Carlos Beltran, 27th of the year, but get this, his 21st on the road. Most road home runs by any player in the National League. And here's LaDuca in an 8-6 game to blow it open. LaDuca, a career-high seven RBIs, third career multi-home run game, and the Mets beat the Reds again, 11-7. Park Rockies trying to hang in the wild card race. Five off the pace as they entertained Tim Lincecum and the Giants. Who's starting on three extra days rest, and yet he hits Chris Iannetta with a pitch with the bases loaded, forcing it a run. Top of the fourth, Ryan Spire plunks Pedro Feliz. All right, that's two batters hitting this game. Chris Sullivan. Corey Sullivan grounds it off the pitcher to short Omar Vizquel. The backhand flip. Watch it again. That is nifty glove work. Never actually had to make a throw. Next batter, Scott Atchison. Beans Matt Holiday. The score at home, that's three hit batters in the game. Bottom eight, Brian Wilson up and in on your Victoria Alba, and he is ejected by home plate umpire Jerry Meals. Giants manager Bruce Bochy. We'll see you later, too. Get out of here. Bottom nine, tied at five. First and second, Brad Huff. Lines at the right center for a hit. Third career walk-off hit for him. Huff's got 11 RBIs in the last 10 games, and the Rockies have won 8 of 11. Our Braves fading. Ryan Howard in the first with a man on. If it's fair, it's gone. Hey. Well, you know, uh, you know, straightaway center doesn't really matter. Third player this season to hit 20 homers on the row at A-Rod and Carlos Beltzer on the others. Chipper Jones answers with career homer number 380 in the fourth, passing Orlando Cepeda for 55th all-time. Inning later, Chipper takes a first ball strike on the inside part of the plate. Take another look. Boy, if you if you follow umpires and officials and you, and you like the way they work, right. this was a game for you. Right, should be there. So a full count now for Jones and takes ball four. Rick Reed calls out a ball, forces in a run. Braves down 4-2. Seventh inning now. Chipper Jones at the plate again. And once again, he takes a first ball cold strike. This time on the outside corner, not happy about it. Then he's, he's the tying run at the plate, and he grounds out to end the inning. He's not pleased, and the Braves go on to lose 5-2. That frustration trickled its way towards the locker room afterwards. This is what he said, quote, 
I, it's a joke. I'm tired of it. And baseball can find me whatever they want. I do not care. Somebody's got to say something. I've got more walks than strikeouts in my career. I know what a strike looks like. You're going to see frustration from now on as long as the officiating is abysmal. Chipper Jones said Major League Baseball ought to be ashamed. It's abysmal. It's awful. Not all of them, but some of them. It's awful. So, when you're a game above 500 like the Atlanta Braves are right now, you do not get on this graphic. Because you know he or she is going to be here. At number 10, not here, White Sox Tigers. Jim Tomey, the line of the first. Carlos Guillen, the stop and the toss. Tigers lost 3-1. Robert? At number 9, squirrels oh, gone wild. Here they are. Two squirrels at Yankee Stadium, one at Bush Stadium. Entertaining, wreaking havoc. Unfortunately for the squirrels at Yankee Stadium, it was slingshot night at Yankee Stadium. And, and that was just very unfortunate. That night would have been, wouldn't have been good either. Yeah. Hard to believe the squirrels weren't number one. What about moose and squirrels? All right, out of number eight, please. Please, get us, thank you. The eight, Marlins and Nationals. Jesus Flores shot down the left field line. Ryan Langerhans comes around to score. Willie Mo Pena even coming around to score. Nationals win on a walk-off hit. Flores gets a shaving cream pie to the face. There's an idea for all Flores. It's going to be a great family reunion. At number seven, Troy Gloss getting Julio Lugo. Look, Mom, no glove, bare hand throw. But the Blue Jays have a reaction. Are you kidding me? <laughs> number five, Justine Ennis, Serena Williams. Ennis making Serena run all over the court, but Serena showing great court coverage. Returning all of the volleys and coming up a winner right there. But Serena lost 7 6 6 1 to the top seed. Out of a four Giants and Rocks, Rich Aurelia. And this one is going to be Corey Sullivan. I believe he just robbed Aurelia of an extra base hit. More from this game coming up shortly. Marlins and Nationals, Austin Kearns fly ball to center. Here comes Cody Ross. Diving catch, getting the uniform dirty, helping out the ball club. Marlins lose, however, 4 -3. At number two, Juan Monaco and Novak Djokovic. Djokovic, the sick backwards overhand backhand. Let me see what it is. Sick oh. backwards overhead backhand.